We give glory to God for yet another week in the land of the living, and we want to thank you for always creating the time to listen to the revelation knowledge the Lord makes available through this channel. As you listen to God again through his mouthpiece, Anthony Adifarakin, may you receive light, and may the grace for application and manifestation rest upon you in Jesus' name. Be blessed as you listen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you glory, honor, and adoration for who you are. We bless your majesty. We celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you for all you've been doing for us. Thank you for your kindness. Thanks for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have come to listen to you because we know, we know you always teach us anytime we gather to um, learn at your feet. So, Father, we pray that you give us understanding. We pray that you grant us grace to also apply what you'll be teaching us uh, this particular week. We celebrate your holy name because you always answer our prayers. Thank you, Father, for always answering our prayers. We adore you. We exalt you. We lift your name on high. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen. We celebrate the Almighty God for the privilege granted us to be among the living this very week. And I want to welcome you uh, to this week's episode of uh, Glenn Podcast. And for this week, we're going to be continuing uh, our series, Understanding God's If and Then. Last week, we took uh, part one. And God has preserved our lives to witness yet another week in the land of the living. And uh, we're going to be considering part two for this week. So, Understanding God's If and Then, part two. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 to 5, according to the New International Version. That's the text we have been exploring. Proverbs 2, 1 to 5, NIV. It says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding, indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as for silver and search for it as for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. May the Lord bless His words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Uh, last week we, you know, we talked about understanding the if statements. Whenever we find if in the Word of God, um, the conditional statement is to follow. And um, when we fulfill the condition of the if, then we are guaranteed the results. Uh, that will surely follow. For instance, we consider Deuteronomy 28, if you remember, uh, where God said, if you obey uh, the commands, it will cause you to be blessed, it will you know, bless your water, it will bless you going out, bless you coming in, all the beautiful blessings in Deuteronomy 28 from 1 down to about 40, uh, verse 14. But everything is anchored on if you obey the Lord your God. Okay? So we talk about looking at, look, observing if statements in the word of God and uh, relating with that so that we can be beneficiaries of the blessings that follow uh, the condition, uh, the conditions. But for this week, we're going to be looking at the verse, uh, the first part, the first part of the verse one of this uh, text. You know, verse one says, my son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, that's the verse one of uh, Proverbs chapter two, according to NIV. So the way we're going to be doing this, um, beginning from now, and uh, as we as we also consider in the uh, in the couple of weeks that will be following, we're going to be looking at keywords. You know, we started by looking at if, then we're going to be looking at some keywords to be able to fully understand what the Lord wants us to get from this uh, text. So that verse one says to accept God's word. We are looking at that word accept, accept. It says, my son, if you accept my words, if you accept my words, if is the conditional uh, word there, and if you accept my words. So what does it mean to accept? Now, to accept means to embrace. If you look at the dictionary, that will guide a little bit. To accept means to embrace, to welcome. It means to receive. It means to not reject. It means to not say no. It means to not explain or excuse away or refuse the words of God. So, when you accept the word of God, it means you embrace the word of God as true. You welcome the word of God. You receive the word of God. You do not reject the word of God. You do not say no to the word of God. 
you do not explain or excuse away the word of God. You do not refuse the words of God. That's what it means to accept the word of God. Say, if you accept my words. Now, I put it to you quickly. The very reason many Christians find it so difficult to apply or practice what the word of God says is because they have not accepted it as true and infallible. The very, very reason many Christians find it so difficult to apply the word of God, to practice the word of God, to do what the word of God says in their life is because they have not yet accepted it as true and infallible. They still subject to mental debate. You still subject the word of God to mental analysis or what still? You subject to societal or cultural scrutiny. You look at it. Does it look like what my society approves of? Does it look like what our culture says? Does it look like uh, the tradition of our family? It does, it does not. You don't subject the word of God to cultural or societal scrutiny. You don't look at the word of God from the lens of your tradition of your family or your society. No. If you accept my words, you know, the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 1, John chapter 1 verse 1, it says, God and his word are one. The word of God is equal to God. That is, the word of God is God and God is the word of God. They are one. And if you truly believe in God and you know beyond any reasonable doubt that God cannot lie to you or God cannot, God cannot mislead you, then you've got to relate with his word the same way. If you believe that God cannot mislead you, then you've got to believe that the word of God cannot mislead you. Because they are the same. God and his word are one. If God cannot lie, his word cannot lie. If everything God says is true, then his word is equally true. It's equally true. See, doing the will of God will only become possible. It will only become a natural flow when you accept his word. Until you accept the word of God as true, as infallible, as reliable, as dependable, as the very, very absolute truth, you will have issues doing the will of God. You will not be able to do the will of God. You will not be able to, you know, function the way God expects you to function. You will not because you have doubts. You want to like find out why why this? Why did the word of God say this one? You know, our culture is not our culture is not like that. You, you know, in our culture, you are free to do this, you are free to do this. The society is approves of it. even the government approves of it. You know, why with the word of God? You you are still you are still debating. <laughs> you are still debating. But when you accept the word of God as true, every other thing is viewed from the lens you view every other aspect of life through the lens of the word if the word says it's true it is true if the word says it is lies it is uh, incorrect then it is incorrect anything the word of god points out as a lie is a lie no matter how popular it is you will not be able to do the will of god on unless you accept his word as truth so the admonition of god for you today is do not fall do not fall into the popular trap of explaining god's word away don't do it don't do it do not fall into the trap into the popular trap of explaining god's word away not accepting the word of god does not reduce its potency in any way get that whether you accept it or not the word of god is still potent it will still do what it will do forever O oh lord thy word is settled in heaven whether believed by you accepted by you or not you don't god does not need people to vote before his word becomes potent he is the lord okay so not accepting the word of god does not reduce his potency in any way it will rather make a victim out of you god forbid it's that you benefit from the word or you suffer because of the same word depends on where you stand so accept the word of god accept his word whether it makes sense or not, whether it's popular or not, just accept it because it is the word of God. And that's what matters. You do not have to accept the word of my but because it is the word of God, you have to accept it. Remember what happened when Peter was, when Peter had fished all night and he caught nothing and Jesus showed up and he told Peter where to cast the net. Jesus, Peter was looking at Jesus. You are not a fisherman. I am the fisherman. I know where to cast the net. I've done all the casting throughout the night. Nothing. 
But Peter said something very important. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will do it again. So Peter was saying, I am the professional. I know the way this thing works. You don't catch fish at this time of the day. I've tried all possible means. But just because you say so, ah, that's very important. He accepted the word of God. He said, but because you say so, just because it is your word, even though it's contrary to my professional career, uh, to my professional understanding, even though it's contrary to the popular belief even though it does not make any sense because who catches fish at this time of the day even though there's no sense in your instruction but just because it is your word i accept it and you know the whole story when he accepted it and did what jesus asked him to do he caught the kind of fish he had never caught in his entire life the boats were sinking nets were tearing that is the god we serve accept his word that's the only way you can benefit from what his word offers the grace to accept the word of god may that grace rest upon you in the mighty name of jesus so you want to surrender your life to jesus christ because that's one way that we make accepting the word of god easy for you because you have to receive his spirit into you you want to accept the lordship of jesus christ over your life you are going to say this prayer after me say lord jesus i am a sinner in need of your salvation Please forgive all my sins. Save my soul and make me yours forever. I surrender my life to you today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your word. We appreciate you for teaching us again. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Just one request, Father. The grace to accept your word as true. May that grace rest upon us all in the name of Jesus so that we can benefit from it. And for your children who have surrendered their lives to Jesus, accept them in the beloved, write their names in the book of life and grant them grace to also be able to accept your word as true. And as we accept your word as true and relate with it as true, let us be beneficiaries of what it generates, of what it, what, can, what your word can deliver in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We give thanks to God for the revelation of His Word. If you said that prayer of salvation, congratulations. Your sins are now forgiven and your new life has begun. Please locate a Bible-believing church near you and start fellowshipping with other believers there. Or if you need help in learning how to live this new life in Christ Jesus, kindly send us a message through our website, www.glome.org, and we will respond accordingly. We will meet again next week for another episode if the Lord has not returned. Until then, keep enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. God bless you.